Hi. It's warm. I don't have a fan in my room. It's a bit hot. But we are filming my September book up look on wrap up. My stack this time actually doesn't look that intense, but I know I read a lot of audiobooks, quite a few short things. Um, I think I read 42 things all up. So let's get going. To start off the month, I read Love <laughs> from A to Z by S.K. Ali. I gave this five stars. This is a contemporary set. Um, Primarily in um, Qatar, and we follow shit. I honestly, this feels so long ago. What are the characters' names? I can't remember. Um, but they both have it's a girl and a boy. Um, she's coming from Canada or America, and he's been living in Qatar. His name's Adam. What's her name? Zainab and Zainab's coming from America or Canada and uh, she has been dealing with Islamophobia in the classroom and she gets suspended for standing up against her really Islamophobic teacher um, and so she is going to visit her aunt in Qatar and leaves early um, so she's kind of on her own there for a little while and Adam's family lives in Qatar but they also have a house in Canada and he's coming back from his like college, college, high school, college, and is coming back to stay with his family for the summer. Um, and it's their like little connection. He has, uh, Adam has, um, MS and so he's dealing with kind of his own mortality kind of issues. And Zainab's struggling with Islamophobia and being hijabi and not knowing how to manage that in a way that's not going to get her in trouble. Um, and it was so good. Their romance was amazing. It was really, like, gentle and well thought out and just so well put together. They both have these journals called um, Marvels and Oddities. Uh, and <laughs> that's kind of how they connect. And it's just... So good. I gave it five stars. It's one of like, I listened to this on audiobook and it's one of the few contemporaries I've given five stars. Like I give contemporary I read contemporaries few and far between, but this is an amazing one and I really, really enjoyed it. Then I read finally King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I've had oh my god, the cat's going crazy. I've had two copies of this for a long time and had never read it. So this is <laughs> the first of the Nikolai duology. Um which is a follow-on from the Grishaverse. It's the newest installment in the Grishaverse. I think the second one comes out early next year. Um, and I'm glad I read this. I gave it four stars. I did enjoy it. I do think... I think it was mismarketed. Like, I don't think it should be called the Nikolai duology. Like, I think that was poor marketing. Because really, I would argue this is like... Um, really has more from Zoya's perspective than Nikolai's. It's more like Zoya and Nina's story than Nikolai's. It's just like Nikolai's drama is the catalyst for Zoya and Nina's story. Though Nina's is kind of joining together at the end. It's its own thing and they'll come together. You know what I mean? Um, I enjoyed all the points of view. I just think if you're wanting a book about Nikolai, this isn't it. <laughs> um, he's there. He's doing things. But it's not like his perspective all that much. Um, so I can't really talk about any of the plot of this, but the Grishaverse is like the original trilogy is a Russian inspired fantasy. Um, and then the Six of Crows duology is like a heist Germanic inspired story. Um, and this world is like really well, really well loved. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I definitely didn't hate it. I know some people hated it. I did not. I don't think it went too slowly. Um, it's not my favorite. Like, I think I'm not as big a, like, hype train of this series as a lot of people. Um, but I feel like I, I liked Six of Crows, the Six of Crows duology best so far. Um, but I don't even, like, absolutely love it the way some people do. So I feel like I was just like, this is good, but I'm not crazy hype about it, so four stars. 
then I read a girl like her by Talia Hill, which is the first in the Raven Ravenswood series. This is a um, shortish romance book following our main character. Why can't I remember names? And my phone's like all the way over there. <sighs> um, uh, our main character is autistic. Um, and she had had this weird relationship with a guy and they haven't been together for a long time but some drama went down and she's now like the pariah of the town and then we follow the love interest is a guy new to town who's working for that guy that like pariahed her and they got a little romance going on and it was great fantastic I love Talia Hewitt's romances I think it was less sassy than the Brown Sisters ones um but still the smut was amazing um the romance was really sweet and tender and it all just worked it really worked so ruth that's her name ruth and evan i can't remember um but yeah it was really really good i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars it was really great and i want to continue the series i also read a short uh, another short kind of like romancy novella of kindred and stardust by archie kalia this is a polyamorous um, romance but it's very romancy there's like no smut it's very light but there is like a sexy it's not even a sex scene it's more like a like romancing through sexual discussion if that kind of makes sense so there's some mature content but it's there's no smut um, and this is set on a space station um, kind of near future because they can come and go from earth uh, and our main character was dating both of them separately, both of the two love interests. And then he left on a mission because both of them were kind of asking him to get more monogamous with them. And he didn't want to pick either one of them, so he just hightailed it on out of there. And now he's come back, but in the meantime, the two of them have started a relationship together. And it's them essentially trying to romance him back in. And it was so good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um... I do think it was a bit short and it didn't give me enough time to sit in the thing. So, like, I loved the dynamic, but it didn't give enough for me, so I gave it three stars. Then I read The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shah. This is a um, futuristic sci fi novel where the world is entirely underwater um, and they all have little submarines that they drive everywhere, and there's a race. It reminded me a lot of Hovercar Racer by Matthew Riley, but with added mystery. <laughs> um, and our main character's father has gone missing, so she participates in this race because the winner gets whatever they want. And she's like, oh, well, my father back. He's meant to be in prison, but she doesn't know why. Um, and then they're like, well, no, you can't have that. So she goes on a mission to try and figure out what's going on. Um, to me, I just found some of this confusing, and I didn't really, like, get the character motivations too much like there was so much that could have been done with it and it could have been a lot darker but it wasn't um and yeah it just didn't go far enough i gave it three stars i enjoyed it i listened to it on audiobook but it wasn't anything spectacular and i yeah i do feel like the motivations and the darkness was there but it was kind of like underplayed rather than fully played oh i was gonna tell you how many five stars i got this month because i feel like it was a lot one two three four five 11, 12, 12 five-star reads this month. <laughs> and this next one is one of those. This is Ray Barrow by Jordan Fuego. I... Fuck me up, fam. This was so good. This is a, um... I would say young adult leaning into, I think, the second book will feel more new adult fantasy. But we follow um, our main character, Tara Sai, from, like, childhood through to late teens. I think she's, like, 19 by the end. Um, and... Essentially, the it's hard to explain, but in this world, it's uh, a West African-inspired fantasy. I think it's West African. The main character is Nigerian, I think. Um, Nigerian-American. Yeah. Um, the king has this ray, which is like a power, that he can... Um, he picks a council of 11, and he, like, they love him, and he infuses them with his ray, and they get, like, a mind bond. And so he has this council of, like, best friends, mind bondy thing, and they're all responsible for different things. Um, and our main character is the daughter of, um, a woman only known as the Lady, and also a djinn. And 
like a gym like creature and together they that her lady mother she's like got a, a wish infused in her her mother's like final wish from the gin and then so she can like enact it in Tarasai and so Tarasai is primed with this wish that is like when you see this boy the prince and you join his council and you're like part of the council then you'll kill him so she's kind of like bound to that um but she obviously like absolutely loves the prince because to get this bond you kind of have to have this like like affection love it's not a romantic love it's like a like sibling sisterly like familial bond thing the romance is actually there's a vague romance but it's actually with one of the other people on the council not the prince the prince is uh asexual i think yeah so she's trying to like not let herself kill the prince if that makes sense um but she's like yeah bound to it and i don't, it was just it's so good it's so good um five stars loved it to pieces it's just so unique and well thought out and well structured and high stakes plot twists i can't wait to read book two i loved this to pieces it was so good then i read collateral damage by uh taylor simmons i gave this i'm gonna give this four stars um, I really, really liked this. This is a superhero novel, um, and our main character is uh, just a civilian <laughs> living in superhero land, and um, the superheroes are like destroying the city in their attempt to like battle evil. Uh, so collateral damage, and she's trying to live her life and gets tangled up in some superhero stuff, and it was so fun. Um, this is an indie press publication, but I would 100% recommend it. It is just so fun and funny and like high stakes but like chill. <laughs> like um, it's, oh, I, I don't even know how to describe it. If you're into superhero kind of stuff, comics, movies, you'll appreciate this. It plays a lot on the genre and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Then I read Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the second Elder's Curses book. I gave it three stars. Um, it's like a 2.5 rounded up to a three. I didn't love it. Um, I liked the first book much more. To me, it just was like the first half was really slow and I like nothing was happening. Um, they were just going around talking about what was happening a lot more than anything actually happening. Um, the second half I did enjoy it and I think is what redeemed it closer up to a three, like rounded up to a three. Um, because once things actually started moving, it was very sassy and very funny. But the first, like, two-thirds, half, two-thirds was really slow. Um, this series is really campy and corny, but it, like, went too far into, like, the bad of that. Also, like, in the first book, I complained that there was a lot of cock blocking happening. There were op so many opportunities to authentically have, like, a romantic sexual moment between Alec and Magnus, and it would be like interrupted by bad things happening this time they were just making out at every inopportune moment like things would be going down it was real dramatic and then suddenly they were making out and i'm like oh, can you not like save it for a like pleasant time oh, look at sissy um so yeah this didn't work for me i didn't hate it and i'm interested to see a lot of the things that were set up for the overall arc of the series like a lot of the mysteries very keen but the actual like plot of this was weirdly paced the campiness oh went overboard <laughs> and yeah i did not love it three star then i read the silence of the girls by pat barker this is um a trojan war retelling that's meant to be talking about the unspoken voices in the war and honestly I think it did not do the job it was trying to do. I gave it four stars because I enjoyed my time reading it, but I really didn't think it delivered on what the um, synopsis was trying to be. We are from two perspectives only. Honestly, I was coming in thinking it was going to switch perspectives between a lot of the women present in the war. Like, there's a lot of perspectives that didn't really get touched on of female perspectives in the Trojan War. And they could have gone so much further on that. But we just followed um, the girl, I can't even remember her name anymore, who is um, 
Odysseus's, not Odysseus's, um, Achilles' slave. And um, then we also follow Achilles for like whole parts of it, like, and for no reason. I didn't understand why we had to follow Achilles. <laughs> Just didn't make sense. When it's meant to be this female empowerment thing. I don't, I don't know. It just didn't really do what it was trying to deliver to me. But I thought it was an interesting take on the Trojan War. Like, explore different ideas. I liked it. It was alright. It just didn't do what I was hoping it would do. Then I read another one of my five star reads. Which is Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabgisha Grice. This is um, a uh, Anatanabe. Anishinaabe? I would look it up, but I left my phone all the way over there. Uh, story. So, from Native American groups living in Canada. Um, and it's a story of survival. It's like an apocalyptic story where suddenly all of the roads, um, all of the power gets cut off, food resources are restricted, and this community is learning to like live off the land again. Um, and it was it's a horror and it's good um really well plotted carefully constructed does a lot of things in a short period of time i listened to this an audiobook it was so good so good i 100 percent recommend it i give it five stars then i read the last name sarah by Kristen cicerelli i gave this two stars <laughs> i really didn't like this i thought the writing was really uh, one dimensional the characters also one dimensional um i really struggled to get through it but i did um because it was pretty like each chapter was easy to flow through but i was frustrated so much of the time like i just didn't get it it didn't work for me i think it was mainly in the writing style and like the stakes didn't feel high enough and like everything just didn't work like i was just frustrated um I feel like I went more into detail about it in my vlogs, and that's probably true of all of these, so if you want to know details about any, like, specific book, go have a hunt through my vlogs from the last month, like, they'll give you a better understanding of, like, my detailed thoughts at the time, because it honestly feels so long ago that I read this, and it was just, yeah, no, I, I didn't like it, I didn't like it one bit, um, but it wasn't, like, bad, bad, it was just, it did not work for me on Slider, so I gave it two stars. <laughs> And I, I wish I liked it, because the third book's meant to be sapphic, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not suffering. Then I read The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by, um, shit, what's the name? By Zen Cho! Oh my god. Um, this is a, um, what's it called? A Wushan novel? So it's like, uh, Chinese, like, martial arts. Um, it's a genre, um, and I think I would have appreciated it even more if I really understood the genre, but I did love this. It was very funny, very dry, sarcastic humor. Um, a lot of like, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but it was funny. Um, I gave it four stars. I just feel like I could have appreciated it more if I had a better understanding of like the conventions it was playing within, but I would recommend it it's fun it's fun uh then i read can i have this clariel by garth nix this is the uh prequel to the old kingdom chronicles following um clariel and it's a villain origin story i did really enjoy this one i do think uh as is common with garth nix it's pretty slow paced and takes a while to pick up and then by the time you get to the end it's going really fast but it did work um i did have a good time reading this and i think it was really necessary to have that slow bit to really build your like care for the character as she descends into villainy um so yeah this was super fun and interesting um i gave it four stars i it's not my favorite from the series i still think the first one um sabriel is my favorite but i did really really enjoy it and i really do want to read the other one which is golden hand which is a 
sequel to the original trilogy. So I do like this series. Then I read another five star read and that is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I do think this is like, I will give it five stars, but a lot of people will hate this series. And I think that's fine. Like, I think I'm just perfectly positioned to love this. It's got a unique storytelling style, the series. It also has a huge focus on like anatomy. It's um, a necromancy sci-fi novel, but so it's very technical in the way it talks about necromancy, which works for me. I know a lot about anatomy, but the average person probably is just confused, but like I would have to be Googling half of what is said in these. Um, this book took a dramatic turn from the end of book one. I mean, not dramatic, but you spend the first like 45, uh, I mean 75% of this confused as shit. Like what is going on? Um, but then it all comes together and it's glorious, though it does take a long time to get there. Um, and yeah, I was confused for a long portion of this, but I was just enjoying the ride. It was a fun time. Um, and yeah, I ended up loving it. I can't wait for book three. I'm so excited. Um, and yeah, it is very like, you have to be the right person for this series, but it is amazing if you were the right person. That's all I could say. Five stars on that. Then I read The Never Tooting World by Rinch Paco, giving this a four stars. I really, really liked it. It's um a fantasy set in a world where it's like split down the middle and one half of the world is always in day and one half of the world is always in night. And originally it moved, so you know, and had a day-night cycle. But the queens had some kind of falling out and it split. And then we followed the princesses who think the other one's dead. Um, and then they're like trying to solve the problem. This has a villain kind of dynamic on one side, a like Mad Max romantic adventure on the other, uh, one side sapphic. Uh, this, yeah, I just really liked it. It was a really good. Um, plot and development and I really liked all the characters. It has disability representation including mental health, um, amputee representation um, and yeah I don't know I, I loved it. I loved it so much. It was so cleverly constructed. It was a fun time. I do really want to read the second book of the duology as soon as it comes out. Probably I'll probably read it in December um, because I'm concerned that like Rinch Paco, every other Rinch Paco I've read I've really worried. Like I read Bone the Bone Witch Saga, and you have to have a like they're they're meant to be marathoned. Rin doesn't really set up much at the start of the next book in a series to help you lead in. So you really have to like keep track of a lot of plot points. It doesn't guide you along in a sequel. So for me, I really want to make sure I'm reading book two super fast so I don't forget too much about this. Um, but yeah, I had a great time reading this. It was fun. I don't think it was perfect, but it was a great time and I'm really interested to see where book two goes. So, four stars for this one. Then I read A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. I gave this one four stars. This is a, a weird book. I honestly have no idea what I read. <laughs> it's a quest fantasy. Um, if you like things like Starless Sea meets like Douglas Adams. And there was another comparison I made in my vlog, but I can't remember what it was. It's so bizarre that honestly, I don't know if it makes sense. Um, but it was a fun ride. Uh, it's a quest. There's um, a world apart from our world. It's called Aurora, but it has a lot of parallels. And our main character is um, Jonathan, is like out to save Aurora, but... <laughs> It's very bizarre. Very bizarre. It's definitely got Douglas Adams-esque things where you just gotta roll with it and it's all gonna like happen. Um, I listened to the audiobook. I kind of want to get a physical copy and reread it because I think it would make more sense in my head. But um Yeah, I gave it four stars. I just didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with it. 
I then listened to Tamarind and the Star of Ishta by Jasmine de Balan. This is um, a middle grade story. We're following Tamarind who's uh, never met her um, uh, Indian family. They live in the Himalayas and she was has grown up her whole life in the UK and her dad takes her back to meet her family and she's dealing with grief um, and explorations of culture and I enjoyed this but I didn't love it um, I feel like it could have gone a bit further it is a middle grade but I would say it was less um, broad reaching in scope than a lot of other middle grades um, I gave it three stars it was fun and enjoyable but it just was not my favourite then I also listened to Pet by Akweke Amezi. I thought this was a middle grade. I do think it's like, it reads high middle grade. It, it's middle grade with dark themes. Does that make sense? It's got dark themes. So middle grade with parental guidance. Um, our main character is about 12 or 13, I think. Um, and it follows uh, Jam. Our main character's name is Jam. She's a trans girl who is, uh, sees this monster that she calls Pet and he's out to like get the actual monsters. He's, he's an angel, but he's like monstrous. Um, and they're out to find a monster, like an actual monster. Um, and it was really powerful. It's a lot metaphorical, um, kind of post-apocalyptic. Uh, and I, Loved it to pieces. I gave it five stars. The audiobook narration was also amazing. I would 100% recommend this. You should pick it up. Then I read Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angeles. Um, this is, I would say, Now You See Me, the movie, meets um, Ace of Shades, the book. Um, but Moulin Rouge has brought up a lot in relation to this, but I feel like it has the atmosphere of Ace of Shades with the kind of plot of Now You See Me. Um, it's very much about magic tricks uh, and magicianship and it was really good. I really want to read the sequel like yesterday. Um, the characters are really dynamic and fun. Uh, there is a lot of mystery. I'm very confused still about some things. The ending was explosive. But uh, yeah, I really loved this. It was a really fun read. I gave it four stars. Uh, it just... It's a good time. I recommend it. It's a debut, but it's so good. It's really good. Four stars. Then I read um, Rafe, Buff Male Nanny by Rebecca Witherspoon. I really enjoyed this. Um, I do think, for me, the attraction was, like, this is insta-last at its finest, and that is not a thing that works for me, like, really. But once the characters settled in, this was such a good romance. Um, sex was great. Loved that. It was really fun. I gave it four stars. Uh, basically, our main character, she's um, a surgeon with twins. And she's divorced from her ex-husband. And so she needs a nanny to look after the twins. I think they're like three while she's at work. Um, three or four. Maybe five. I think they're just about to start kinder. And so she hires her last nanny, just like ups and leaves when she's not home and leaves the kids with a note. And... So then she's desperate to get a new nanny on board quick. And so she hires Rafe. This was so much fun. Four stars. Then I read a short story um, called The Mystery of D Mysterious Study of Dr. Sex, which is part of the Harrow, the, the, the like Gideon the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth series. Um, this is just a little like prequel novella that doesn't really tie into the plot, but it explores some characters. I really enjoyed it. It was fun and interesting. Um, but it's just a little shot. I got a full star. It was good. <laughs> then I read another book that was two stars. And that is The Vanishing Deep by Astrid Schultz. I now know I'm just not going to pick up any more Astrid Schultz books. I was giving her a second chance. I didn't really like Four Dead Queens that much. I think I gave it three stars. Because there were some things I really liked. But it didn't overall work. This didn't overall work. Um, and I was left with a lot of questions. <laughs> really, it was a lot around. Like, this is a very, like, it's a sci-fi um, the premise is that, and I, I say that with raised eyebrows, like, because honestly, it's not very logical. And I think the logic breakdown is what really struggled me with, made me struggle with this book. Um, essentially there was a land problem where we were, had too much land. So they decided to blow up Antarctica to make land. 
like blow all the ice off Antarctica. So obviously there was mass flooding. Like, hey, there's plenty of reasons why you'd have mass flooding that is not blowing up Antarctica. And who would be saying it? Like, there is so much evidence that would stop anyone ever blowing up Antarctica. You would think. It just didn't seem logical. Um, and then there's technology in use that doesn't make sense and is underexplained. Um, and you're just meant to kind of go along with it. And that really frustrated me. Um, things just, yeah, didn't make sense a lot of the time. And I was left just like in confusion because things were trying to be explained, but they didn't make sense. Like there's no birds left because everywhere's underwater except for these floating things. But you know, you know that birds this there's a thing called seabirds right there are plenty of birds that barely ever land except to lay eggs like and eat off fish like some logics here just didn't make sense this is like somebody wanted to write a sci-fi the, the author wanted to write a sci-fi but she didn't do any actual research into how any of the science would actually work and someone who knows even like a mild bit about ecological science I only did like undergrad level ecological science and even that was never my expertise but like I know enough to know that's not how this would go or like if it was it'd be very fluky like it doesn't logically make much sense so that really frustrated me and yeah and they have a technology where they can like like, they're living in this post-apocalyptic, everything's covered in water, little communities, land, but then they also have a technology that can bring people back for 24 hours by, like, connecting their heartbeats to someone else. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Oh. Two stars. I did finish it, though, so that's saying something. Um, then I read Amelia Fang and the Half Moon Holiday. This is the third book in the third or fourth book in the series um i gave this one four stars i love this series it's really fun it is for younger readers um and amelia fang is a vampire and her friends are all different little demons but they're really sweet and i love them like there's a yeti no she's not a yeti maybe she is a yeti i can't remember um and a little grim reaper <laughs> Grimaldi, he's the son of the grim reaper i love him and it's just really sweet and cute and fun and in this one they were um, going on a like overnight camping trip to the like day side uh, where everything's like sunshine rainbows and they're really terrified of it and I love it it's so cute um I give it some four stars then I read Cemetery Boys one of my another five star read of the month this follows Yadril and um shit what's the boy's name again why am I like in Julian and Yadril is a trans boy who his family are all brujex and he knows he's a brujo which and the brujo like have daggers and they like pass on spirits to the um to the other side and the bruja are healers and he knows he's not a healer he knows he's a brujo but because uh he was assigned female at birth the family are all like, no, no, you're a bruja. That, that's, you're a bruja. That's just how it works. But he doesn't have bruja magic. And so he's been, like, relegated to, like, the magicless group. Um, but he's like, no, I'm a bruja. I have bruja magic. So he's trying to prove himself as a bruja. Um, and he gets entangled in a big dramatic thing. And he raises the spirit of um, Julian and they have the sweetest little romance but like obviously julian's gonna die like properly at some point he's a spirit so he's gonna have to pass on at some point and it's just the sweetest thing it's there's the plot is great the characters are amazing this is honestly like how is this a debut like i know um and thomas has written other stuff that hasn't published yet like his second book is going to be um is an earlier one that was written before this but like if you haven't read Cemetery Boys, please pick it up. Like, and it's beautiful. I, it's so good. Our voices, Latinx trans rep, and like, it's just amazing. It's so good. <laughs> then I read The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami. This is a teeny short. Um, I enjoyed it, but I feel like I was missing things. <laughs> Essentially, a boy goes into this underground library and gets stuck there. It's kind of labyrinthy. Um, 
I enjoyed it, but I feel like, yeah, I feel like I was missing some mythology that would have given it deeper meaning and I didn't have the skills to properly analyze it. But I give it three stars. Then I read Star Daughter by Shvita Thakra. I gave this a three stars. I think this just wasn't for me. Three stars? Is that what I gave it? No, I gave it four stars. It's like a 3.5 and I rounded it up because I want to support marginalized authors. This is an Indian um, fantasy sci-fi thing <laughs> crossover we follow our main character what's her, our main character's name um Sheetal. and she's the daughter of a star and then she kind of ends up in this like competition to decide which family is the leader of the stars um to me this did a lot of things that just like didn't work personally for me but i think is really valuable like i think it's a good um example of what we're missing in YA at the moment which is um books for targeted at like 13 to 15 year olds which are still obviously YA but I feel like the YA age bracket has aged up so much that uh, that kind of audience is being missed and this does that um but for me like I'm just not that target audience so I didn't like it didn't connect with me as much it also, um, what was the other thing I said it did really well? The writing style is like a blend between contemporary and sci-fi fantasy. Um, it would be a really great bridging book for readers who prefer contemporary but are interested in getting into sci-fi fantasy. So it has sci-fi fantasy elements but the, the writing style is very contemporary-esque. So again, that's not me either. Like I, I read a lot less contemporary than I do sci-fi fantasy. So I think this is really well-constructed, powerful, like for its target audience i'm just not its target audience um so yeah i have like 3.5 rounded up to a four i do appreciate it i just didn't enjoy it that much like i enjoyed it but i didn't like deeply enjoy it then i read oh my phone's going off but it's all the way over there then i read juice like wounds by shauna mcguire this is a what she calls a um side quest to the Wayward Children series. It's very short. It follows Lundy. I won't tell you more than that. I gave it five stars. It was really good. <laughs> then I read Witches of Lichford by Paul Cornell. This is um, a, I listened to it on audiobook. It's a novella um, with modern day witchcraft. Um, I enjoyed it. I feel like I missed some key components. I gave it three stars. Um, it just went over my head a little bit, but that's probably because I was listening to the audiobook. Um, it was a lot about the like boundaries between worlds. It was fun. Didn't love it. Then I listened to Catching Tell a Crow by uh, Ezekiel and Amberlyn Quimolina. I loved this to pieces. This is an indigenous Australian story. Um, we're following a girl who has died. We're from her perspective. She's like a ghost to her father. Um, as well as a crow and then a girl who was in a fire and went missing it's all a mystery it's really confusing it's told partially in verse partially in prose by confusing i mean like all the threads eventually come together it's got a very circular storytelling narrative and I, I, it's so good i feel like weird shit it's so good it's amazing i gave it five stars then i read agnes at the end of the world by kelly mitt williams i gave this eight four stars yes i really enjoyed this though there are a few elements that like were not really for me it's very religious in a weird way um we follow agnes who grew up as part of a cult um and they were all meant to on the judgment day go down into a bunker but she's been hearing like there's this space she goes into that gives her like a deeper understanding of the world and she thinks she's being like talked to from god and so she kind of goes out into the world with her little brother who has diabetes and she's been like helping him like get insulin from the outside world because they're not meant to have medication in the cult um and so the two of them leave and they kind of it's in the middle of an apocalypse she's the prophet of the apocalypse and like that connection to religion i think other people will appreciate much more than i will um but overall, the story was really fast-paced, really intriguing. I, like, zoomed through it, and I gave it four stars. But, yeah, I think you would have more of an appreciation of this if you have some kind of connection to religion. I have none, so. <laughs> then I listened to Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale. I say listen to. I feel a bit bad about it. 
but I listened to this and I was like, you know what, this is fun and easy. I'll do some harder work that I don't know what listening to an audiobook for. Uh, and I remember hardly anything about this. It didn't absorb into my brain at all because it was book up with her. I want to go back and reread it. I gave it three stars <laughs> for that, very neutral. Um, I don't remember much at all, to be honest. It's a sequel. Um, I didn't love the first one, so that's why I wasn't too stressed, but it's a middle grade. I can't really contribute anything to the conversation about this one. Then I listened to Other Words From Home by Jasmine Walger. I really enjoyed this one. This is four stars. Um, it's about uh, a main character, Judah, who, um, Jude, Jude, I think it's how you pronounce it, um, who came from... Uh, who grew up in Syria and is a refugee to America. I say refugee, but sh less, like, she was on a visa. They moved to live with her uncle, who already lived in the US. But So they're moving in from the war zone. And they've left her father behind, but her mother's pregnant. And it's her trying to, like, settle into an Islamophobic US. Um, and how that's all going terribly. Um, but her trying to overcome those issues. It's told in verse. It was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. But I do think it's a verse. Like, if you'd like your books told in verse to really read, like, poetry, I don't think this does that. It reads much more like broken up prose. But I do think it was really powerful, and I would definitely recommend the narrative. Then I read A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. I gave this five stars. Um... As with the first book, this is the sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. Um, it's pretty much a direct continuation, but explores different parts of the narrative. Why I love these books so much is their exploration of, like, power and, like, you know, technological age. Like, Hank Green just has a lot of thoughts, and I appreciate them, and they speak to me on a deep level. I don't even really know how to talk about this, but I just felt so in, like enlightened by reading it um, and the narrative was super interesting and super fun and uh, yeah I loved it if you didn't like book one don't read book two because it's much of the same in style and themes but I loved book one and I loved this five stars <laughs> then another five star read was Black Work by Alison Whitaker this is um, another indigenous Australian Release this one's a collection of poetry um, that explores uh, what it means to be Aboriginal in Australia. Um, I loved this to pieces. I thought it was really powerful. Um, I do think, though, if you're not Australian, it would be wise to read this in tandem with... Sorry, there's fluff in the sky. With other... In, in uh, Australian literature to have an understanding... Like, I think you'd need a reading guide because it does rely heavily on context, as is true of most poetry. So if you're not familiar with an Australian context, it probably won't make a lot of sense. But as an Australian, this was super powerful. I loved it. All of the poems were amazingly constructed. Um, and it just, it did so much for me. I, yeah, loved it to pieces. I want to recommend this to everyone. It's so good. Then I read Slam Volume 1. This is a graphic novel about, um, uh, comic about, um, roller derby. I gave this four stars. I do think it would not be the best avenue to learn about roller derby because I feel like it's hard to explain in a, like, static picture format. But, um, as someone who's aware of how roller derby works and the rules and things, this was great fun for me. I enjoyed it. Um, I wish there was more. I'm definitely going to read book two, like the second volume. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Four stars. Then I listened to The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. This is a middle grade, um, based in Haitian folklore. Um, and it was so good. I really, really enjoyed it. It was very eerie, very creepy, very fun. Um, four stars. We follow our main character, Corinne, who is, um part Jumbie, but Jumbies are all like the creatures that live in the island. Um, and it's a little like exploration of that. It was so good. It was really fun. I would definitely continue these audiobooks. Then I read Changeless by Gail Carriger. I ended up giving this a three stars. This is the sequel, the second book in the Parasol Protectorate. Um, 
For me, I forgot how slow these are. These are really slow. They're a historical steampunk romance, um, but more like fun adventure with a romance involved. Um, and yeah, it was just slower than I anticipated. And it like took a bit of a drag, but I do find them fun. I'm definitely going to continue the series, but I need to remember when I go into book three how slow they are. Um, so yeah, I give this three stars. It was fun. Then I read Punching the Air by Ibi Zaboy and, Z Ibi Zaboy and Yusef Salam. This is um, our story told in verse about um, wrongful incarceration in the US. Um, and we follow Amal who is uh, ends up in prison for a crime he didn't do. And his like, experience and exploration of that through poetry and art. And it was amazing. I gave it five stars. The poetry was so well constructed. I believe some of it was Yusuf Salam's poetry while he was in prison. He's part, he was one of the exonerated five. Um, and it was so, so good. Read it. It was amazing. I also gave five stars to The Seventh Perfection by Daniel Polanski. This is a novella um, that's told in the most interesting way. We follow a woman who is... Um, has a perfect memory and is out to find out some information uh, and she's interrogating people but you only hear their responses um, and nothing else like it's just dialogue and just what they say back to her which leads to a lot of unreliable stuff and it's so good I loved this it developed so well I just I can't tell you any more than that but just go read it it's so good then I listened to The Incredible Adventures of Cinnamon Girl by Melissa Kyle this is an Australian um kind of apocalyptic contemporary we follow um our main character whose name is alba and she it's a, like a romance with her best friend like a best friends to lovers kind of romance but under the backdrop of like a prediction that the world's going to end on that their small town's going to be the only thing left right as they're finishing high school and trying to figure out their next steps Really fun, really good. I enjoyed the audiobook. I gave it four stars. Then I read Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. This is the sequel to Silver in the Wood. I enjoyed this, but I feel like the pacing was a little bit off. The first half and the second half have very different, like, pacings. Um, and essentially, we're kind of like, it's a direct continuation of book one following the same characters. So we can't really talk about it too much. But we go into Fairyland. It's a good time. I did enjoy it. Four stars. It just was not as good as book one for me. And then finally, I read Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Robel. This is um, a thriller following um, our uh, a girl wh whose mother had Munchausen's by proxy um, and was imprisoned for five years. And now she's coming back out and it's kind of a revenge plot, but we're following rose gold um right when her mother goes into prison so her kind of like developing her own identity outside of the Munchausen by proxy her mother enforced upon her and then her mother's perspective when she's coming out of prison to go moving back in with rose gold um this got intense it did have a slow start for a thriller like it took a while to get in but by the end i was fascinated i gave it four stars um yeah it was, it was freaking good. It, the plot twists were a little predictable to me, um, but I was still super like invested in how they played out and it worked out really great. So four stars. So those are all the books that I read in the month of September. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I've been filming for like almost an hour, but I hope you enjoyed. If you wanted to see what each of them was for, for Book Upolathon, and how the roles played out and everything, you can go watch my vlogs. You'll see me doing it throughout the month. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time with another video. Comment down below if uh, you participated in Book Upolathon, how you went, if you met your TBR. I, I would love to know. Thanks for watching. Bye.